this video, I'll be teaching you how to find the inverse Laplace of that very expression there. So the first thing we always do is to try to decompose this magnanimous expression into simpler parts. So what we're going to be doing here is this. We have s squared plus 3s minus 7 divided by s minus 1 bracket s squared plus 2. So this is what we have. It's going to be equal to, since I have two factors here, this is going to be over s minus 1 plus over s squared plus 2. So this is what I'm going to be having. Now at the top, this is a. At this very top, I'm going to be having bs plus c. I did not just say b because this very guy is a quadratic factor. So you can't do that here. This is a linear factor. That was why we just had a. But if it's a quadratic factor, you're going to have bs plus c. Right now, with this very expression, I can quickly find the value of a. Remember, you can learn about partial fractions by watching my videos on partial fraction. You can check out my playlist on that. So to find my A, the bottom of A has S minus 1. So if you say S minus 1 is equal to 0, S will then become 1. What I'm actually using right now is called the cover up rule, and I've made videos on that. So you can watch partial fractions to understand it perfectly. So anywhere I see S right now, I'm going to be calling S 1. So this is 1 plus 3 minus 7 divided by this is 1 plus 2 look at this carefully see what i just did here this s minus 1 i've already said is equal to 0 so i cannot be using it here. i'm going to cover it up that's why it's called the cover up rule i'm going to be using the other guy instead so if you say 1 squared you're going to have 1 then plus 2 so this will be equal to 1 plus 3 is what 4 4 minus 7 is minus 3 then divided by 1 plus 2 is 3. So this is what? Minus 1. So it means A is equal to what? Minus 1. Okay. To get our B, B will be very difficult to get by using this very guy. Because cover up rule does not work for quadratic factors. It only works for linear factors. So what I'm going to do is this. The numerator here is S squared plus 3S minus 7. This will be equivalent to A bracket s squared plus 2 plus bs plus c bracket s minus 1. If you do your LCM normally, you're going to still have this expression as the numerator. So these two things are equivalent to each other. So what do I want to do? I do not want to expand this. It's going to be long. I don't want to expand it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say equate all s squares all the s squares i want to equate all the s squares now what's the equivalent of s squared here one so this is one equal to in this first expansion what will be the equivalent of s squared when you expand here you're going to have a s squared so what's the equivalent of s squared here a then plus when you come here and expand b s times s is going to give you b s squared so it means your b is the coefficient at this part so this is 1 equal, what is your A minus 1, then plus B. This is 1, can this minus 1 come over? It becomes plus 1 equal to B. 1 plus 1 is what? 2. So it means your B is equal to what? 2. That's the meaning. So I've gotten the value for what? B. That's your B. Now the next thing is this. The next thing we're going to be solving is for C. This is C here. So what do I need to do? What can I choose for C? I want to equate all the constants. Equate all constants. Equate constants. So let us equate all the constants. What's the constant on this side? It's minus 7. Equal to, what's the constant on this expansion? A times 2 is going to give you what? 2A. Then, on this other side, when you expand, C times minus 1 will give you minus C. So that's our constant. So this will then become minus 7 equal to bracket a is what? a is minus 1 then plus, sorry, this is minus c. So what will this then become? Minus 7 equal what? Minus 2 minus what? c. You can just say the answer is 5, but let us just do it. I have minus here, minus here, minus here. Remove all the minuses. 7 is equal to 2 plus c. 2 plus what will give you 7? Obviously, it's 5. So your C is equal to what? 5. So that's for C. Your C is equal to what? 5. 
So we've gotten all we need. We've gotten A, B, and C. So right now, let us find the inverse Laplace finally. So this will be the inverse Laplace of this whole expression here. We said it's equal to what? A over S minus 1 plus BS plus C over S squared plus 2. So what's your A first of all? We got our A as what? Minus 1. So this is minus 1 over S minus 1. Then plus, we have BS plus C. So what's our B? B is 2. So this is what? 2S plus, what is our C? 5. Then divided by, what will be here? S squared plus what? 2. So this is what we have. Now, the next thing is this. Before I distribute the inverse Laplace across to everything I have here, this 2S plus 5, you can actually separate it because they can have a common denominator. So this is the inverse Laplace of minus 1 over S minus 1 plus, I can say this is 2S over S squared plus 2 plus 5 over S squared plus 2. It's really important I do this. Really, really important that I do this. So what will be the next thing I can do? Distribute the inverse Laplace across. So inverse Laplace of the first guy I have is minus 1 over S minus 1 plus the inverse Laplace of second guy is 2S over S squared plus. Now at this part, we have, I'm supposed to write S squared plus 2. But um, think carefully. Let us do a little bit of thinking. This very 2 here, because S has a squared, this 2 is supposed to be the square of a number. So think, which number would you square to give you 2? Is it hard to get? No. This would be root 2 or squared. Because square, we cancel square root. We're going to have your 2 back, so it's still the same expression. So close this guy, then plus inverse Laplace of, we're going to be having 5, divided by um, s squared plus, um, where's that idiot, root 2 squared. I believe with this root 2, the expression is looking as if it's quite difficult, but it's not. It's not difficult. So that's so what I'm going to do next. Let me still write another line, another line that will help us get our final answer. Now see, for everything that I have here, come to this very part. You would agree with me that this minus sign can come outside. It can come outside. So this is minus inverse Laplace of 1 over S minus 1 plus these two can come outside. Yes, because it's not really needed for me to solve this S guy. So this is 2 inverse Laplace of S over S squared plus root 2 squared. Then plus this 5 can come outside. So this is 5 inverse Laplace of 1 will be left all over s squared plus root 2 squared. So this is what I have. Okay. So with this, let us now finally get our answer. So this is minus. We have 1 over s minus 1. What are you thinking of here? Remember that when you just have over s minus something or s plus something, this is exponential what t. I would have said exponential 1t, but it doesn't really make sense. So this is exponential what t. Then plus 2, what will be the inverse Laplace of s over s squared plus root 2 squared? Please take note, when it's s at the top, you're talking about cos. So this is cos. What is your a at this part? Root 2. So this is cos root 2t. Then plus 5. What is the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared plus root 2 squared? And this is where a little bit of problem comes in. Now, this is s squared. So this means we're talking about sine here. Sine because the top is not carrying s. It's carrying a constant. And what is that constant supposed to be? It's supposed to be what? Root 2. Because if you can remember the Laplace transform of sine at is always a over s squared plus a squared. So we have a then a squared. Since I've already written this part as the square of root 2, it means your a is supposed to be what? Root 2. Meaning, we were supposed to have root 2 at this point. That's the meaning. We're supposed to have root 2 at this very point. Now, if I put root 2 here, what would... Because by me leaving root 2 at this point, I've already spoiled the expression. So which way would I do to counterbalance it? I'm going to also 
put root 2 at the bottom and multiply it. So see, at this point now, since this root 2 here, which of the root 2 do I need? I need the root 2 at the top, not at the bottom. So this one at the bottom can come outside and this becomes all over root 2. can come outside. Then what would I be having here? I'm going to be having what? Since this is root 2 over s squared plus root 2, it means this is sine root 2t. This expression is the final answer to that very question. It seems long, right? Please remember to watch the videos from the beginning so you understand Laplace transform properly. Thank you very much for watching this very video.